I work at Paris Smith. I'm, I'm a partner in the employment team. We've got eight people in the team, two partners and six solicitors. And we act for employers and employees advising on employment law. Mostly we act for employers. So I will spend some time advising employers on day-to-day -day employment needs, such as an employee may have raised a grievance or there might be a maternity leave question. So that's part of my job and also I deal with a lot of employment tribunal claims. So we'll be dealing with claims from employees who have left an employer and they might be claiming unfair dismissal or some sort of discrimination complaint. For example, discrimination on the grounds of sex or age or disability and tribunal claims have been on the rise in recent years because in the last 10 years or so there's been a lot more employment rights aimed at employees. The, the law as it's drafted is fairly employee friendly and is giving employment rights. It's protection of employment. It's not saying it's protection of employers. So what we find is, is a lot of the cases will be employee friendly, not because the judges are trying to be employee friendly, but simply because they're interpreting the law which is trying to protect employment. And when you have law which protects employment, it tends to protect the employee. But if an employer is aware of the legislation and treats employee friendly, uh, employees in a reasonable manner, often they'll have an awful lot, lot less complaints and problems to deal with than the employer who is unaware and who perhaps rides roughshod over the employees. So there's been European directives giving extra rights to employees, for example, holidays. The right to annual leave keeps going up. All sorts of other law as well are in terms of discrimination. So, for example, the most recent legislation on discrimination has been in relation to age, and you can no longer discriminate on the grounds of age. Although in the, in the courts recently there has been a lot of talk about retirement ages, which is, is still currently a hot topic. Discrimination has been an area where, which has really grown in recent years. If you go back sort of 30 years or so, there was discrimination on the grounds of sex and race, and everyone was fairly comfortable that you couldn't discriminate against people on those grounds. But in recent years, it, it, it's really grown, and this has caught employers, um, una not unawares, but they've struggled to keep up with it, really. So, for example, now you can't treat someone less favourably if they're part-time or if they're a fixed-term employee. So if you've got a, a part-time worker, you can't give them less holidays or less time off or less rights. Um, it, it, that, that's been difficult for employers to get used to. And, and in 2006, when the age discrimination legislation came in, it's taken a long time for employers to, to get used to this, really. So you can't treat someone less favorably just because they are older or younger. Because a lot of people look at age discrimination legislation and think, well, this is just protecting people at the sort of end of their careers, but actually it's also protecting younger people as well. There have been quite a few cases um, where employers have, have treated people who are younger less favourably as well. So employers struggle to get to grips with these new pieces of legislation. Most employers that we act for will, will firstly look at the cost of dealing with a claim in terms of legal costs, but that's not the real cost really, because yes, legal costs are something that an employer could really do without and would rather not spend, but the real cost is is the employment, the, the employee relations problem. Because there'll be a time in an employment dispute where it could have been resolved. So an employee will typically have a complaint against their employer and they will raise it with someone and say, look, I'm not being treated fairly here. I feel I'm not being treated fairly. And there's a time then an employer can resolve the situation. Often there is a time. But once it gets further down the line, especially if an employee has left the business, really there's no there's no return. And I've had many cases where existing employees of the business are interested in the outcome of a case and they might have the similar sort of grumbles and grievances against the employer. I've had other cases where really, if, if it had been sorted out early, the, the employment relationship could have perhaps been patched up again. So the cost is, the simple answer is, the cost is, X thousand pounds to defend a case and you might win or lose. Another cost might be an award made, but, but the real cost is you've got to recruit someone else then into that position. You've got to deal with all the fallout from the other employees and also all the management time dealing with these problems and issues which could be better used on more productive areas. So the costs are really hidden and often employers don't look at those hidden costs when they're dealing with employment. What I would say is that we, we see different employment practices. So I've got clients who are I'd say good employers and clients who are not so good. And the clients who tend to treat their staff fairly and try and deal with issues early have far less 
employment problems and cases than the employers who, who are a bit you know, who are less aware of, of the employment issues and, and trying to sort them out early. Well, the top tip is before you act, take a take a step back and because uh, there's been quite a few cases that come around where where things are done in the heat of the moment or an employee will, will react or an employer will react in a way which perhaps if they'd step back it might not have been a problem. The obvious other tip is, is be aware. Now you don't have to know every piece of leg legislation but I, I do quite a lot of seminars and talks to employers where I just make them aware. I'll say, look, did you know that this is unlawful? You can't treat someone less favourably on the grounds of disability or race or nationality or um, sex or part-time status or fit and people might think well actually I didn't realize that or did are you aware that these extra rights for maternity returners for example did you know that well no we didn't you know flexible working did you know that, that because if you actually know that some that these rights exist you can see a problem coming so it's very difficult for employers to keep up to date but just by having an awareness of the all the rafts of new legislation that's come in will really help because then they can stop either use their internal HR advisors or take advice externally, but stop before they act. Because often we get given a case when it's really too late to change the outcome. All we're doing is, is trying to fight it to get, to get less money awarded or, or win it. But actually, it's not going to change the fact that the unlawful action has already happened. So it's easy for me to say this because um, I'm doing it every day, but, but try and sort of just be aware of all these extra rights that are coming in, and then you might not get into the sort of problem in the first place.